Hello and welcome to this video on the top three beginner mistakes in latent class analysis. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to multivariate statistical methods, such as structural equation modeling and latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources. In this video, I want to talk about what I see as the top three beginner mistakes in latent class analysis. So what is it that often goes wrong when people first do these kinds of analyses? The number one thing that I see is that people start with a sample that is too small. A latent class analysis, especially a classical latent class analysis that uses categorical indicator variables such as dichotomous items or ordinal items, requires a sufficiently large sample for providing stable results. And what sufficiently large means is not so say exactly defined in terms of, oh, 200 is not enough, but 250 is. So it depends on your data situation, of course, your items, the number of items, the quality of the items, the number of classes, and so on. And I'm actually linking a paper in the description where we examined uh, in a simulation study different factors that impacted the quality of estimation in latent class analysis. So there are different factors that play a role. However, we can say with relatively high certainty that sample sizes below, let's say around 300, are typically a little bit shaky. There are situations where you could get away with something like 250 or something like that, but typically I wouldn't advise people to do a latent class analysis with many fewer cases than let's say 300 about. So that seems to be a relatively good rule of thumb. And then depending on the complexity um, and other circumstances, you might need more than 300. So this is something to really um, keep in mind when you plan your study, when you plan to do a latent class analysis, make sure it's feasible to collect a sufficiently large sample and that will save you a lot of hassle down the road. Think for example in terms of the sizes of the classes also when you have five classes and you have only 200 people in your sample then you would have uh, a lot of classes that have very few people in them and so then automatically that could lead to results that are maybe not as trustworthy. The second um, to of the top beginner problems in latent class analysis that I've seen in my career as a researcher and also as a statistical consultant is that people run into so-called local likelihood maxima without realizing that. So what does this mean? I have um, another video on this channel that discusses the issue of local likelihood maxima and how to, dis how to avoid them in more detail. So you can check that out as well. But just real quick, what does this mean? In latent class analysis, we use typically maximum likelihood estimation as the default estimator to determine the model fit statistics and the parameter estimates. And so we are maximizing the um, likelihood of our data given the model parameters. And so in this process, when you have a mixture model, when you have multiple latent classes, it becomes increasingly more difficult to identify the global maximum of the likelihood function as you extract more classes. And so with two, three classes, it's typically not a problem, but as you go past four, five, six classes or something like that, it is more likely that you run into what we call a local solution where the global uh, maximum of the likelihood has not been reached. And so that is something that is a um, something that, that happens quite frequently and especially beginners are often not aware and you may not see it from your solution because you may get parameter estimates that look okay, you may get classes that you think are interpretable, but in fact the parameter estimates might be biased because your solution isn't a true um, maximum likelihood solution. And so this problem can be addressed by running multiple sets of starting values and checking whether the best log likelihood value at the end can be replicated for multiple sets of starting values. As I said, I have a separate video on that issue that you can check out. But this is something that is very, very important because you don't want to end up 
with a model that is not a valid model. You don't want to embarrass yourself and publish results that turn out to not be valid results because you ran into a local maximum. So that is something that you absolutely want to avoid when you do latent class analysis or other mixture models such as latent profile analysis or factor mixture models, growth mixture models, and so on. This is an issue that can occur in with other mixture models as well, in particular when you have when you extract many classes. And that brings me to what I see as the third most common beginner mistake with latent class analysis, and that is extracting too many classes. Because uh, oftentimes beginners will just um, totally so they rely on fit statistics, for example, a BIC value or something like that, or a um, likelihood ratio, bootstrap likelihood ratio difference test for determining the number of classes and will just follow what the fit statistics say. And then in many cases, they will say, oh, extract eight, nine, 10 classes or something like that. Particularly when you have a large sample and a lot of power, then fit statistics, especially significance tests will tell you, oh yeah, eight classes is still better than seven classes, nine classes is still better than eight classes, and so on. And then you'll end up with 15 classes. And that is typically not what you want for multiple reasons. So the likelihood increases, as I said already, that you'll run into a local solution with more classes, so that's something to avoid. And then also with more classes, oftentimes you get more estimation problems of other sorts. So there might be something where you get boundary estimates, and I have a video on that too here on this channel, meaning you have probability estimates for item response categories that are exactly zero or one, and that could indicate that something isn't right. And also with more classes, you might get spurious classes that are not interpretable, that are artifacts and that are not valid, that may be very small and maybe not actually reflecting a, a real group in the population. So beware of just blindly relying on fit statistics for the class en enumeration problem. Also think about what makes sense based on theory, how many classes really um, do we need and keep in mind that this is a data reduction technique also in a way so you don't want to have a, a large complexity such that you have to describe 15 classes in your research report. I mean that's not typically something that is helpful and, and we want to simplify. We want to have a model that captures um, the key so say, differences between people in terms of latent class profiles and not have 15 classes or something like that. I hope you found this video useful for getting started with latent class analysis. Please also check out my other videos on latent class, latent profile analysis and other mixture models. I have a playlist also that I'm linking in the description that has a lot of, that covers a lot of different topics in mixture modeling. Also check out the description for additional free workshops and other workshops and leave a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to hit the like button and I'll see you again next week.